welcome back to my channel. My name is Sierra, and I am going to fill this big giant mold out. Um, I'm going to start with the edge. I don't have my resin mixed up. Looks like I have some blue in there. It's just a, a cup that I've been using. And I'm going to try Distress Oxide inks in this because I want it a dark opaque. Um, I did try this, not this color, but I did try to see if this works in resin. And it appears to. Um, the regular Distress reinkers don't work. It turns the color really funny. So this seems this seems to work. I haven't tried a real light color. I'm trying to get that ball to move. Let me mix this up. Okay. Um, so I'm going to try this. This is the Chip Sapphire. Because I want to use this temporary tattoo on this. And I'm trying to, I want a dark blue between some of these colors. So I found this and I'm going to go with it. And I'm going to mix my color first and then put it through the vacuum chamber. I'm going to start off with three drops. It's fairly, very, very concentrated pigment. And this resin I'm using, it's not my favorite. I'm trying to use it up. And the only way I'd be able to use it up is because I have my vacuum chamber. Because I bought this prior to getting my vacuum chamber. It's just too thick. The bubbles are just crazy in this. I'm going to add a few more drops. I'm going to go three more drops. That should be enough of that. So I'm going to mix this up for four minutes. And then I'll be back and I'll explain more about that ink. All right, I transferred it. It's been through my vacuum chamber. I transferred it to a cup I can squeeze. Um, the color looks like, I'll put some on paper towel. Looks like that. It's very pretty. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to pitch and pour. So I decided I wanted to try and see if these inks would work in resin because I have, in the oxides, I have every color. I think there's 72 colors. And then in the Distress Ink line, I have... I don't know, 30, 35 of those. I tried the Distress inks and it did not work. It looked good when I poured it and everything looked good. And when I, demol when I demolded it, it had a real funny uh, hue to it. It looked, it did not look good. So... I was like, well, I know that doesn't work in the resin. I don't know if it was the heat uh, from the resin um, causing it to turn like that. I just know that it was very, very unsightly when I pulled it out of the mold. Very, very, very unsightly. And I don't want to take this over the edge. Um... I'm hoping two ounces is enough, but not too much, but at least enough without going over. Looks like a, I did a good job with my water measurements, huh? Yeah, imagine that. Looks perfect. And I am not turning my heat mat on. It is very, very late. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, not too bad. I am going to take 
a baby wipe with some alcohol on it and I'm going to wipe the edges a little bit because I don't want it drying on the edges like that. I have some that came up on the sides just a little bit. And I'm going to finish cleaning up around the edge and as soon as this is cured, I want to put this temporary tattoo down and I also want to somehow put this in the corners. We'll see about these. So once, once this is cured, I'm going to come in with a thin clear coat. Just thin. I'm just going to cover what I can of the mold. And then uh, after, then I'll, once that cures, we'll go on to the next step. This is cured enough to go on to the next step. Um, I have just four ounces of resin here. I uh, did put it through my vacuum chamber. And I don't want to fill it up. Basically, I just want to put a very thin layer down. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm also going to, in the next step uh, portion of this, I want to go into how um, the police academy... Um, how I had a really hard time not getting in. I, I mean, I passed everything really well. So it wasn't about that. It was, hold on one second. There was a so-called friend who was preventing my, at my, uh, application to move on to the next step. So that's what I want to talk about in the next portion of this video it's interesting about how people think they're doing you a favor and how they think that what is going on in your life actually is what's going on in their life and how people need to, especially if they don't know you well, uh, mind their business. You know, the, I guess this guy had good intentions, but... They were in the wrong place. He was in the wrong. He wasn't, um, he didn't know us well enough to do what he thought was best for me. So I want to get into that. It's, it's interesting. I think it's interesting. And that's what I want to go, that's what I want to talk about. And I hope I didn't put too much in there. No, I didn't. So that's what I want to, I don't like using this big stick that way. That's what I want to talk about. And I think it's interesting. I hope you guys find it interesting. And I'm going to get my little stick that's, I just have a better control with this little one. put some of this on there all right this is cured um it took about i've let it sit for 24 hours to let it completely cure okay i wanted to explain the inks that i'm using i'm going to explain everything that i'm going to do and then i'm going to go into my little story time now the pigments that i'm using like this one I'm going to use is called Wilted Violet. It's an oxide. It's a, it's a re-inker for these ink pads. Okay, that's all it is. And I'm using the oxide because they have uh, another type, same brand, but it's uh, a dye, not a pigment. The dyes don't work with resin. I've tried it. The colors turn brown in the resin. So far this seems to be working. This, like right here, I used, it's called Chip Sapphire. So I picked this violet out to pick up the violet and the flowers. So that's what I'm going to do my my top coat on that. I just hope all this works. Um, I'm gonna cut out this, put it down, use the water, and go from there. I got my scissors, uh, water, baby wipe, and I'm going to mix my resin 
uh, when I get this part done and we'll go from there. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go into my story uh, about the, the academy and stuff like that. I'm going to set this here for right now. Um, not the academy, but getting into the academy. We had... Um, my husband was already a police officer. He'd been a police officer for... Oh, uh, almost when I um, applied for the department, he already had 10 years on the job. So he had a lot of friends on the department. And um, a lot of his friends were uh, rooting for us, you know, so, um, behind us, backing us all the way with... Uh, with this and in order to uh, even get hired there's a long process that you uh, go through uh, like the first process I went through was um, you fill out the, your application then once your application gets accepted and then you do the agility not the agility you do the written portion of um, of the hiring process where I think it's, I don't know, I don't know how many questions it was, a lot. You were, you were there for several hours. And you, if you pass that, which I did, I passed that with a really high uh, scores, then you are given your agility date. And your agility is running and climbing eight-foot walls. I don't know how tall the wall was. It was taller than it is now push-ups and you've got dummy drags and you got all kinds of stuff you have to do uh, in that portion of the exam and then um, let me find my other ones and then from from there you then have to uh, if you pass the agility uh, which I did obviously um, then um, you go and you have your psych evaluation and after your psych evaluation you have uh, oral boards, which are like job interviews, but like job interviews on steroids. <laughs> I can't even begin to describe how intense these oral boards are. Basically, you have the inspectors and commanders and stuff like that. They put, you, they ask you situational questions, and you have to answer them, and they decide if they're going to hire you or not based on your answers. So you go through several of those. In the meantime, while you're going through all this, uh, you have recruiting. They are talking to your friends, talking to your neighbors. They're talking to everybody that, uh, you're, everybody. They're also going through your bank records, making sure you're not in debt, making sure you're in everything's clear on your bank statements so it's a it's a real lengthy process very very lengthy process and normally typically uh, it takes anywhere from six months six to eight months typically and then once you do all that and if everything's good then you are given the day that you start the Academy well I did this and I didn't want my husband calling in anybody, you know, calling his friends. He had people at recruiting. He had people all over the place that, you know, my husband's very well liked. Very, very well liked. Uh, he's a great, he was a great police officer and never had a complaint, nothing. And so time has gone by and uh, we're, we hear absolutely nothing. From the department, nothing. You know, I'm, I passed everything. I'm removing this. I passed everything. We're just waiting for the, the date that I start the academy, and nothing. And then two years pass, and I tell my husband now, I'm like, just call recruiting and find out what's going on. You know, I, I'm I'm coming up to the point where everything that I've done, 
is going to expire. All these certifications that I had passed, they're going to expire. And I'm going to have to start the whole process over again. And I did not want to do that. So he, he called. I'm just wetting this. He called and they looked into it. And apparently a friend of his who also who worked at recruiting uh, was holding my application, my whole file back. And the reason he gave was uh, he was going to save our marriage. You know, he toted himself as being a Christian, and uh, he's like, says, oh, marriages fail when you have two police officers married. You know, she can stay at home and take care of the kids. Like my wife, you know, he, he was married, and I guess his wife stayed at home and cared for the kids. And my husband was so angry. He's like, how dare you, you know, presume to get, you're going to save our marriage from what, you know? And so um, within a day, two days of making that phone call, finding out what had happened, after he talked to that, that found out what happened, he was like, release her file. My husband's like, release her file. Don't, don't try to save my marriage. There's nothing wrong with my marriage. I hope I'm doing this right. And so I uh, reported to the next class, which was, I don't know, a couple weeks later. And the the thing is, the guy who was saving my marriage he ended up uh divorced <laughs> not that i wish divorce on anybody but his wife filed for divorce it's like you know take care of take care of your home don't i don't know if i'm doing this right don't don't push yourself on others you know I'm doing this right Okay. I don't want to lift it up. I'm just gonna slide it. But yeah, he ended up him and his wife ended up divorced. Isn't that crazy? And so there's that. I'm just concentrating now. So, yeah, he um, thought he was saving my marriage. My husband and I, we've been married now for our 37 years will be in this month. So, I, we didn't need this man to save us. We were doing just fine. I don't know if I want to use these. It just looks... Maybe the butterfly one up here. I'm going to do the butterfly. So that is what happened. Uh, it took two years. And I was, when I started the academy, I was asking other people. I mean, I had the schooling. I had everything, all the requirements I met. And I asked this one female. Uh, she was sitting next to me and first day in the academy how long it actually took her uh, from the application to th that class six months only took her six months two years I that guy held up my file two long years that's a long time to hold somebody up that looks really cute I just don't like some of these bubbles that are appearing in here. I don't want to rub it. So, but yeah, that looks, that looks cute. I hope you can see it through the other side. I don't see why not. Yeah. So I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to mix up some resin. Um, and I'm going to use the pick. I'm going to mix up the resin 
and I'm going to put this wilted violet in. I'll let you know how many drops I put in. But I'm going to put this in the, the resin, drop it in, and mix it, and then run it through the vacuum chamber. Four ounces of resin, and I put in eight, I don't know, ten drops of the wilted violet. And I let this dry. So I'm going to pour this in. Uh, hopefully I have enough. If not, I can always top it off. So I reported to the Academy, and I might lose this well of this butterfly. I reported to the Academy that Monday, and everything was going just great. And I thought, oh yeah, I could do this. That Monday, all we did was fill out, I couldn't even tell you how many life insurance companies were there for different types of insurance policies, but that was our Monday. We had one guy who was so nervous he misspelled his name because they gave you a placard that you filled out to sit on your desk so they knew who you were. He misspelled his name. It was kind of funny. But everything was going great. I'm like, oh yeah, I can I can do this, no problem. This is this is gonna be this is gonna be easy. Ha! And that was on a Monday. And I guess the reason they were going easy on us was because they had those insurance representatives there. And so when we returned that Tuesday, that Tuesday was known as Black Tuesday. That's when the full force of the Academy was revealed. And our TAC officers, they, they did not uh, play games. They were old, older military guys. And I think we ended up with 25 in each class. 25 out of, and it was 70 or 80 we started with. And before that first week was done, we were, yeah, they they didn't stick around. I don't know if I need more. I might need to top off a little bit more. But I'm going to see how this goes. I'm going to spray it with a little bit of alcohol. So if you want to hear about Black Tuesday, let me know. And I will let this sit for an hour. I will not turn on my heat mat. This is cured. Um, I'm really curious to see how these inks look in a mold. I mean, in resin. Because they are not made for resin. But they're, I didn't turn my heat mat on either. So, and it's completely cured. I can feel some bubbles. Oh, well, that turned out nice. That turned out really pretty. See, there were some marks on my mold, but that turned out really nice. What do you think? I think it turned out nice. I really like it. I mean, I really like it. Yeah, that turned out beautiful. And I don't need no cleanup. That turned out really pretty. And the oxides are working. That is the most surprising thing of this whole thing. Is the oxides are working as a really good pigment. I mean, really good pigment. I have all the oxides too. So there it is. There is my tray with a temporary tattoo and oxides as the pigment. I, this is amazing. I want to thank you for hanging out with me today. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, please leave in the comment section down below. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. 
If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. To my subscribers, I truly appreciate you. You have a great day and God bless. Bye.